Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Gen AI Vila. So today, one of my friends shared with me this blog about this new model called Cohere Embed V3 that's just been released on Azure AI Studio. So in this video, we're gonna see what we can do with this Cohere Embedding model and see what are some of the easy, low-hanging fruit kind of project that we can pull out for using this new model. So here's Azure AI Studio. You can click on model catalog. And then once you are here, you see that this announcement, which is the most recent one, says news from Cohere. So that's what we're talking about today. You view the models, and then you can see a couple of things. There's chat completion, text classification, things like that. The one we are interested in is an embedding model. So here we have one for English and one for multilingual. Now, of course, English is not very interesting. Let's use the multilingual. So you click in here, and here's a basic introduction and description of what the model is doing, uh, kind of acts as a model car sort of thing. And then you can check out the pricing. Now, to deploy this, you just need to click on Deploy button, set up a project. You can click a new project, things like that. And then once you go through it, you'll be able to have the programmatic access. So I just went through all that. And then here you can see I have a Cohere Embed V3 here. So by clicking there, and you can see that I have my API key, and these are the API endpoint. So for the sake of simplicity, we're going to play around with the first API, which is language embeddings. And this is a multilingual, so hopefully I can use Chinese, use whatever other language that I prefer. So with that being said, we're going to take this, and then we're going to go to a Python notebook. So I have the code here. First thing is to get the API endpoint defined here as well as API key. Once that's done, you can define the headers. Now we're making an API call, so we need to have some sort of JSON payload, right, as body of the API. Uh, so here I use a very simple dictionary, which can be interpreted as a JSON file. And again, you can see here, I have a couple of sentences. I have a list of strings, and then inside these strings, you can see they're not English. Uh, this is actually Chinese characters. Here it says, 我今晚吃饭了, meaning I had dinner tonight. So this is the payload. Now we can make an API call. So once you make an API call, you can see that here's the result, which means we made this call successfully because it only gave us this result if the status code is 200. Uh, so once that's done, we know that the data is here and we can see the embeddings. Uh, for example, you can call the data and then you're gonna see a bunch of numbers. So that means the API call is a success. The model is indeed deployed and I can extract the vector representation of whatever the sentence that I'm typing down here using this API. So now the API is here. What are we going to do next? Right? We don't want to just stop here. Right? We want to put this in production. We want to put this at use. Right? So what are some simple, easy to lift, low hanging fruit application that we can do in just a few minutes? And based on my experience, the most simple one has to be semantic search. So let's give that a shot. So first thing to do is to pack everything together into a nice function called embeddings. We can do so by shoving everything into a function just like that. And then we give a cool name embedding. So this get embedding function once it's defined, uh, we can then invoke it by calling their API. So for example, we can use this chunk of code. Uh, here we have a small database with two Chinese sentences Let's see if we can get the numbers out. Uh, here we go. And that is how we define this helper function. And you can call these arrays of vector representation as a simple vector database, because it's the vector representation of this document, of this two sentences, right? Which is a smaller database. So now that we know this thing is working, let's try to create some sort of user query. So for example, user may say something. In this case, 吃饭 is a two character phrases. That means having dinner or having a meal. And as you can see here that these two characters is similar to these two characters in the first sentence. So whatever it is that we're doing, we better be able to tell that the user query is closer in distance, is closer in proximity to the first sentence than to the second sentence. If we are able to come up with some sort of system that that is the case, then boom, there we go, the system is a success. We have successfully picked out the content 
that is similar to the user query. So let's define a user query. Let's make sure we have the embeddings of these two characters, right? Sure, fine. This two characters of a user query. Let's make sure we have the embeddings of that by calling this get embeddings function that we define above. Now we have a bunch of numbers, right? We have a bunch of numbers for the user query. We have a bunch of numbers for the vector database. Now we need to have another helper function to calculate the similarity. The most easier way to do so is this function called the cosine similarity. And then this is the helper function for us to do that. So to calculate cosine similarity, we need two arrays, aka array one and array two. So the idea is very simple. If you toss in two arrays, you'll be able to calculate some sort of cosine similarity. And you get the idea, the higher the number, the better, right? 80% is better than 70%, is better than 50%, something like that. So now that we know this function is working and we have this cosine similarity be able to be calculated based on two different arrays, now you get the idea, right? Now we need some sort of a small loop to calculate all of the similarity scores. So I have a function here that does just that. So uh, whatever user query is, and then whatever vector database we have, uh, let's use this for loop to loop through every single one of the content in the vector database so that we can give a list of scores. And in this case, we can calculate this first one is 80% and the second one is 59.8%. So that gives us some sort of way to make comparisons quantitatively. And the last thing to do is to somehow visualize this, right? We want to make sure we understand what is going on. So let's use Panda Data Frame to plot our data frame with all the text that we have in the database, and then the vector embeddings and the similarity score. So for example, the first sentence is a Chinese sentence, 我今晚吃饭了, that means I had dinner tonight. Here, you see the vector representation of that sentence. And then there's a similarity score says 80%. The 80% is calculated from the numerical proximity of this vector and the embeddings of the user query. So to better explain what that means, I have a simple code stop out here to put everything together in one giant cell of code. And let's do some simple experiments. So for example, we have two sentences here. What if I just take the first sentence and I'm copying pasting that down exactly what each character is for that first sentence? We should be expecting a similarity score to go up heck of a lot higher than 80%, right? Because I literally just copy them down. So let's run that. And then you can see that the similarity score is actually 97%, which of course is higher than 80%. So what that means is this user query is very, very, very similar to the first sentence in the database, but not so similar to the second sentence in the database. And that little 3% of difference is uh, potentially this little dot, this little period, after the sentence. And this is also a foreign language. Uh, so you might expect a little bit of error here and there. And then if you remove a couple of characters, right? Let's say I've removed three characters and then I'm only left with this first three characters. Now you would expect the 97% to of course drop. So let's run that code again. And boom, there you go. Now it becomes 81%. But it's still higher than 60%, which is this which is the distance of the user query to the second content in the database. And that makes sense because I did have three characters matching the first three characters in the first sample of the database. And now, of course, if I take the content of the second sentence and I put it in user query, you should be expecting this result to flip. So the second number is much higher than the first one. So let's run that code again. Let's make sure we understand the difference. So this is the user query is going to have 97% in proximity to the second sentence. And that makes sense because I copied it down there. And not so much, which is only 54% with the first sentence. So there you go. Now you understand what does it mean when people are running a semantic search, right? When you run a semantic search, what do you mean by that? Well, we're looking at user query and then we're getting embeddings. And then we'll take a look at this embedding and calculate the similarity score against every single content in your database. 
whatever the highest similarity score is, well, the user is probably talking about that. Then that is a document that you retrieve to present to the user. And then you can use that to enhance the prompt. So hopefully this can minimize the hallucination. Hopefully this chatbot now is equipped with the knowledge that you want the user to see from your own database. And you can essentially put together this system by scraping any PDF to create this text of documents however you want. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.